we are looking at 13.10, which is screening for genetic diseases. So the objectives we've got are that embryos can be screened for some alleles that cause genetic disorders and some of the concerns and issues associated with the screening process. So currently screening is only available for older mothers, which are considered to be 35 or older, or if you've got a problem in your family and you're worried it might show up in your um, offspring and your children. So for women over the age of 35, there's an increased chance of genetic disorders because of course those eggs are 35 years old. And just prior to the egg being made, uh, in its final division, sometimes that division doesn't take place properly, sometimes the chromosomes don't separate properly, and that can lead to trisomy or three chromosomes instead of two, and that's the case with Down syndrome, which is three chromosomes on the 21st pair. So currently, it's only offered to a certain number of people. One of the tests that you might go for is something called amniocentesis, and this is done at around 16 weeks. And what happens is it's quite an invasive test because they use an ultrasound scanner to make sure they know the position of the baby and then they use a needle and they withdraw some of that amniotic fluid. And what we've got to remember is that that baby has been made from a fertilised cell. It's the cell and the sperm that's come together. But not only has it made that baby, that baby has made the umbilical cord, the placenta and the amniotic fluid. So all they actually need to do is remove a little bit of the amniotic fluid, which will contain cells that have come from the baby, and then they can multiply those cells up and test them for genetic disorders. Chorionic villus sampling is another type of sampling that can take place, and it takes place earlier. Normally the baby has to reach about 16 weeks of development before an amniocentesis can take place. But for chorionic villus sampling, all they need to do is take a little tiny bit of the placenta. And that's done with a catheter, a fine needle, inserted up through the vagina, and it just takes a little tiny piece of the developing placenta. Again, they'd use an ultrasound scanner to make sure that they're hitting the right part and they're not taking a bit of uh, the baby or the amniotic sac or any of those things. But both of these procedures, can increase the risk of miscarriage. So it's a big decision for a lot of couples. They need to weigh up the benefit risk ratio just in case they miscarry following the test. And especially with the amniocentesis, if you think about it, they're breaking into the amniotic sac and extracting that fluid and that can therefore cause complications. Sometimes screening can give you false negative or false positive results. In other words, a false negative, the screening might tell you that your child hasn't inherited the particular disorder you're trying to avoid and where the baby's born, you find out that it has. And equally, a false positive, you could terminate a pregnancy and then find out when they do future tests on the fetus that your baby didn't actually carry the abnormality at all. And that can be, again, quite distressing to parents. Screening can also take place with embryos before they're implanted into the female. If a female is going for IVF, she might have seven, eight, nine different fertilised embryos to choose from, and they can take a few cells from each of those and find out which of those developing embryos don't have the abnormality, and they can then implant those. Ethically, there are reasons against having screening. So for example, in America, where else, there was a case recently where a deaf couple both mum and dad were deaf and they uh, were having IVF and they wanted the embryos screened for deafness and they wanted to select a deaf child to be implanted into the mother and their argument for that was that deafness was part of their community. Deaf was what they lived with and therefore they wanted their child to be deaf too. So where do you draw the line? Is that ethical that you would select a deaf child over a child that wasn't deaf? There is concern that screening will lead to designer babies because where do you draw the line? People who are deaf can still exist, they can still communicate and they can still live. So why would you select against them, for example? But what about height? What about if somebody said, well, um, you're socially better off if you're tall, therefore I don't want a short child. And if my child has the uh, genes to be short, 
I'd like to make sure that they don't have that, so I'll terminate. Where do we draw the line? And so designer babies is very much a fear for the future. There are economic considerations too. So screening is expensive. Perhaps it's five or 10 pound for every person that's screened. But then if you don't screen and then a baby is born, the cost of intensive care, of numerous surgeries, of house adaptations, of constant care through their lives is massive. So the economic considerations have to be really carefully thought about. So let's just recap. There are genetic disorders that are passed on from parent to child. If the parent is older, or if those genetic disorders exist in the family, screening can take place. Screening can <coughs> take place uh, through, um, when we use an IVF, you can look at the embryos there, or more invasive methods, such as amniocentesis and chorionic villus sampling. The problem with those is number one, they can increase the chances of miscarriage, and number two, the idea that maybe we'll be one step closer to design of babies because what might be ethical and right for one person isn't necessarily ethical and right for the other person. In the future, it's hoped that doctors and scientists will devise a way of going in and fixing those genetic abnormalities so that this level of screening doesn't have to take place. The other disadvantage is that we can sometimes get false negatives and false positives. And that rounds up chapter um, 13 and lesson 13.10.